A man is seen writing his testament before going on a journey with his son. When the father hears something, he looks out to see that his son has been beheaded. The father jumps outside the cart and runs for his life. When he doesn't get too far, his head is also cut off by someone. In New York City, Constable Ichabod Crane finds a dead body in the river, and when one of the authoritative figures orders to burn the dead body, Crane proposes that they should at least run pathology tests in order to find out whether or not the person was alive before he was thrown in the river. In the municipal watch house, Crane proposes that as they are near the new century, they should be relying on new scientific methods for identifying the real cause of murders and death. The higher authoritative figure responds to Crane that he should travel to Sleepy Hollow. In the Hudson Highlands, the authoritative figure tells him that three people were murdered over there, with all of them having their heads cut off completely. He tells Crane that he should take all of his scientific experiments over there and detect the murderer. Crane gathers his necessary belongings and travels to the Sleepy Hollow. When he reaches the town, he is already frightened by the sight of it. Crane goes to a house where a huge party is going on. He interrupts a pickety witch game and runs into Katrina Van Tassel and tells her that he is looking for her father, Baltus Van Tassel. Baltus enters the room with his wife, Lady Van Tassel, and Crane introduces himself and tells him about his objective of coming to the town. Crane is given a room to settle in. Baltus introduces Crane to some of his close associates, Dr. Thomas Lancaster, Reverend Steenwick, Samuel Phillips, and James Hardenbrook. Baltus introduces himself as a farmer that prospered vastly in this town. The town looks to him as a council as well. Three people were murdered. Peter Van Garrett, his son Dirk Van Garrett, and Widow Winship. All of their heads were cut off and taken away. Baltus and his associates believe that all of these murders were committed by the Headless Horseman, who was a Hessian mercenary. Baltus tells Crane that the Headless Horseman loved carnage and would decapitate the warriors on the battlefield. He would ride a black steed named Daredevil. The Headless Horseman was later found and decapitated with his own sword and was buried in the western woods. Before the Headless Horseman was killed, he found two little girls near him. Even today, Hessian continues to haunt the people. Crane listens to them terrified and tells them that he will look into it. Later that night, a gunman is chased by Hessian and is beheaded as well. Mr. Killian provides Crane with a horse named Gunpowder. The people find the dead body of the gunman, whose name is Jonathan Massbath. Crane is suspicious about how could everyone know the names of the people that are murdered when their heads were taken away during the murder. After checking the body, Crane concludes that the body was cauterized as if the sword was red hot. After the funeral of Jonathan, his son, young Massbath, offers his service and help to Crane in order to avenge the murder of his father. Crane refuses his help and tells him to look after his mother. But when Massbath tells him that his mother has also passed away, Crane takes him under his wing. Phillips tells Crane that Jonathan wasn't the fourth victim but the fifth. He tells Crane that there are a total of five victims in four graves. Crane takes out Widow Winship from her grave and after operating on her body, he finds out that she was actually pregnant. When Crane is wandering around the town, a headless man teases Crane by throwing a flaming pumpkin head at him. It is later revealed that it was actually three young men, including Brom Van Brunt that were messing around with Crane. During this hoax, Crane also gets flashbacks of his mother. When Crane wakes up the next morning, he meets with Katrina. After a long chat with her, she gives him a gift of a book regarding the charms of the spirit world. Both of them spend some more time with each other. Crane meets Phillips once again after seeing him arguing with the associates of Baltus and lets him know that there was never a headless horseman and believes it to be a hoax. Suddenly, both of them start to hear the sound of a horse approaching them. The Hessian arrives and beheads Phillips. Crane is horrified and spends most of his time in bed. He further gets a flashback of how his mother loved him and used to be tortured by his father. Crane courage himself up and leaves with Massbath to find the resting place of the Hessian. Crane tells him that he believes that everyone that was murdered was linked to each other in one way or another. Both of them venture into a cave and encounter a witch. After sitting Crane down, the witch says that she knows where the grave of Hessian is. Before she could reveal the location, the witch jumps on Crane and reveals her horrific look. She tells him that the grave of the Hessian is near the Tree of the Dead. The witch faints on Crane. While traveling to the resting place of Hessian, both Massbath and Crane hear something and believe that someone is around. Katrina has arrived and says that she's there to assist Crane and Massbath. Before they could make out, Massbath tells them that he has found the Tree of the Dead. Crane cuts the roots of the tree and finds many decapitated heads. He digs the grave of Hessian and finds only the body and not his head. Crane concludes that someone took out the head of Hessian, and Hessian would continue to decapitate the heads of many until he gets his own head back. Hessian suddenly appears from inside the tree and rides away on his horse. Crane pursues him as well. Hessian enters Mr. Killian's house and tries to behead him. Killian fights valiantly but Hessian overpowers him and decapitates him. Hessian is still not done yet as he goes to Killian's wife and beheads her as well. Hessian hears something and starts breaking the floor and finds the dead couple's child. Hessian doesn't spare him too. Brahm is seeing this from a place near the house and shoots down the Hessian. Hessian rises as well and avoids killing Brahm. The Brahm is still adamant about fighting Hessian, but the headless horseman is way too powerful for him. Crane arrives and tells Brahm that the Hessian isn't after him today. Hessian still ends up brutally killing Brahm and stabs Crane as well. Crane isn't hurt that bad, and when he wakes up, he informs Baltus that he believes that Hessian doesn't kill someone at random. Rather, 
He goes after the ones that are handpicked by the person that has taken his skull from his grave. Crane thinks that Hessian is being controlled by that person. Crane gets another flashback of his past where he witnessed his mother being tortured and killed in an Iron Maiden. When he wakes up, Crane tells Katrina that when his mother died, he lost his faith because of logic and reasoning. He also says that he should not have come to this place as the spiritual world is messing with his ability of reasoning with facts and logic. The next day, Crane and Massbath try to link all of the murdered people with each other. He tries to make sense of everything and all of the signs points toward Baltus. Both of them go and meet James Hardenbrook. Massbath finds his father's satchel and takes out the testament written by Peter Van Garrett before he and his son died. In the will, Peter had passed on all of his wealth to widow Winship who had secretly married him. Both of them were expecting a child as well. Crane believes that Baltus and his associates knew about the testament and tried to get the wealth for themselves as well. Because all of Van Garrett's death would result in the passing of the wealth to the next kin. Reverend Steenwick knew about this because he performed the marriage. Dr. Thomas Lancaster attended the pregnant widow Winship. Samuel Phillips gave the protection of the law. And James Hardenbrook concealed the documents. Crane believes that Hessian was brought back to kill Peter, his son, and Winship first. Later on, Jonathan Massbath, because he was their servant and the witness to the testament, and following this, Samuel Phillips. Everyone involved in this activity was killed so that the wealth could go to Baltus. When Crane returns home, he finds Katrina with the evidence Crane could blame Baltus with. She is disappointed by Crane. Young Massbath finds a drawing of an evil eye under the bed, and Crane believes that Katrina had been doing this all along. During the night, Crane follows after Lady Van Tassel and finds her getting intimate with someone. She cuts the palm of her hand during this as well. Katrina burns all of the evidence Crane has gathered. The next day, Van Tassel asks Crane not to talk about what he has seen her do with Baltus. Baltus arrives and tells Crane to leave the town as everyone is going against his acts. When everyone is gathering at the church for a meeting, the Hessian arrives and cuts off the head of Van Tassel. Baltus runs to the church and locks everyone in there. Katrina begins to draw something on the floor, and Crane notices that Hessian cannot enter the church. Everyone is arguing with Baltus that he should sacrifice himself as Hessian has come for him and not for the rest. Hessian picks up an arrow-like piece of metal and throws it right at where Baltus is standing. He is able to get Baltus out of the church and decapitates him. Katrina faints at the sight of it, and it is seen that she was drawing an evil eye on the floor. The next day, Crane bids Katrina farewell. Massbath believes that Katrina was the one that would call upon the Hessian, but Crane asks him not to believe something that might not be certain. During his ride back home, Crane takes out the book Katrina gave him. He finds out that the drawing Katrina used to make on the floor was actually a protection for her loved ones against the evil spirits. Crane stops going and checks on the dead body of Baltus and Van Tassel. After examining the wound on the hand of Van Tassel, he concludes that a wound like that could only have occurred when the person is dead. Katrina later on shockingly finds Van Tassel alive. Van Tassel takes away Katrina to the nearest local windmill. Van Tassel summons Hessian and asks him to behead Katrina this time. Van Tassel faked her death by killing the housemaid and beheading her. She explains to Katrina that she lived with her sister and her parents. Her parents worked for their landlord, Peter Van Garrett. When his father died, Peter threw them out for the family of Baltus. Her mother took care of Van Tassel and her sister, but she too died in the woods. She and her sister witnessed Hessian get killed in front of them. At that moment, Van Tassel offered her soul to Satan. She asked it to avenge her and her family against the Van Garretts and Baltus. A few years later, she married Katrina's father and found out everything about the wool and the fortune. She summoned Hessian to kill everyone involved in this. And now that Baltus has died, he has left all of his fortunes for Katrina. She also killed her sister, the witch, that guided Crane to the grave of Hessian. Crane and Massbath arrive and so does Hessian, and all of them are able to escape after setting the windmill on fire. All three of them run away on the horses, and Hessian follows them as well. They hardly fight off Hessian and are able to push him deep into the woods. Van Tassel arrives and shoots Crane, but he doesn't die because the bullet had hit the book Katrina gave him inside his coat. Before Hessian could decapitate Katrina, Crane gives him his skull back which was in the possession of Van Tassel. Hessian spares Katrina and puts his skull back on to regain his appearance. Hessian takes Van Tassel away with him inside the Tree of the Dead. Crane returns to his home with Katrina where the new century is right on its way.